men and women who have dedicated their lives to serving in this role and for the sacrifices they have made to reach this milestone. We ask for your guidance and protection over us as we enter this challenging and important profession. Grant us wisdom, patience, and discernment as we carry out our duties with integrity and compassion. We pray for our family and loved ones who have supported and encouraged us along the way. May they continue to be a source of strength and support as we begin our careers. Lord, we ask for your presence to be felt at this ceremony. May your peace and love fill the hearts of all those in attendance. We pray for a spirit of unity and camaraderie among this class and their colleagues as we work together to uphold justice and promote rehabilitation. Finally, Lord, we ask for your blessings upon class P143 as we take on this important responsibility. May we always remember to treat those under our care with dignity and respect. And may they be a shining example of your love and grace in their interactions with us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather and celebrate this milestone. We pray that this graduation ceremony will be a time of joy and reflection, and that it will serve as a reminder of the important role that we as correctional officers play in our society. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. One, two, two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We want to see so many people here today to help us support this graduating class. I know you're proud of what they have accomplished and ready to support them in their new career. We thank all the family and friends of these cadets for being here today with us. Cadets, after today, you will hold a unique and vital role in our society. One that demands unwavering integrity, accountability, and dedication. Today, we gather here to celebrate an important milestone in the lives of our new GDC staff members. It's a moment of great pride and joy as we recognize their hard work, dedication, and determination that has led to their success in becoming BCOT graduates. Let's give them a little round of applause. Mr. Tyrone Oliver, who Okay, and also we're going to acknowledge our chief of staff, Mr. Alvin Watson. Oh! <laughs> 
Jessica Griffin. Ms. Edward has completed the following departmental training, basic management, events uh, management training, Correctional Leadership Institute, Professional Management Program, Sargis Academy, Peace Officer Standards and Training Instructor Program, which is she's a senior instructor, and Deputy Warden of Care and Treatment Academy. Mrs. Edward is a proud native of Eastman, Georgia. Ms. Dodge County. Ooh. She's a veteran of the United States Air Force, a wife, and a mother. But the most important title of all is Gigi, because she has the best grandchildren on the planet. All right, a round of applause for our guest speaker. Bills 
So I decided I would just see how that day went before I made a rash decision. So that's what I did every day after that. I just took it one day at a time. And it has truly been an amazing journey. Each of you in this class will have your own personal journey with the Department of Corrections. Even though some of you will go to the same facilities and maybe even on the same shifts, you're gonna take different courses. And I'll be honest with you, there will be things that will happen to you that you'll have absolutely no control over. But the one thing that you can not control is you and how you respond to it. So I wanna tell you briefly today about my journey and some of the things that helped me over my career is to have a positive attitude. No one wants to be around someone who's always angry, complaining, or just a negative person in general. So as a cadet, I made it a point to be at work and on time and to have a pleasant can-do attitude. I readily accepted any task that I was instructed to do and I would volunteer for other tasks that no one else wanted. As a result, I got asked to do more and more tasks. Some saw it as me being gullible, being taken advantage of, being used. But I saw it as an opportunity to learn. Because once you learn something, no one can take that knowledge or experience away from you. And you never know when those skills and experience will be needed in the future. And that can lead to other opportunities. So make it a point to be pleasant and always be eager to learn. Another thing I did was to find a veteran role model in my facility. Some will call them mentors, but I don't call them that. See, a mentor is someone you go to for advice. But I didn't go to these people, because people can tell you one thing and then they do something else, right? So I simply watched them. I watched how they interacted with the offenders and how the offenders responded to them, either positive or negative. I also watched how they interacted with the staff and how the staff responded to them, positive or negative as well. I listened to how they spoke and how they carried themselves, their work ethics, and I noted their respect levels with their peers and our supervisors. So as you're around, you'll hear things about different officers. And if they're good, you'll hear the good. And if they're bad, you'll hear the bad. But it's up to you what you do with that information. From what I learned by watching people, I learned what to do and what not to do in certain situations. I learned how to manage conflict and what advice I should listen to and what advice I should disregard. So become a watcher of people and pull from their strengths, but also learn from their weaknesses. Remember I told you I had a positive attitude and a strong work ethic? So I made a split shift in record time. And I had some sweet jobs. I was key control, tool control, disciplinary as an investigator. I was the captain's clerk, the deputy board and secretary. I did a lot of stuff. And before I knew it, I made sergeant in only three years. I know that seems like a long time now, but I was doing good back then, baby. <laughs> and then I made lieutenant two years later. I became the first admin lieutenant at Burr's Correctional Training Center. And do you know what that meant? That meant I was on split shift forever. <laughs> Before I knew it, I had been in the same spot for almost five years. 
And that was uncommon territory for me because I was used to moving and shaking and, you know, doing something new. No promotions, no more accolades, no more nothing. Just work, work, work. We all eventually comes for everybody. Eventually, I recognize the correlation between my past accomplishments and my positive attitudes as opposed to my current situation. And that's when I began to do the really hard work. And that was to work on me, to work on my shortcomings, to work on where I needed to strengthen myself. So I made it intentional to start treating my staff with respect. I made it a habit to smile again, to listen to them, to speak up for them, and to recognize them for their work. So you see, it's easy to get off track and to lose your focus. Because negativity is all around you. And you have to be intentional to fight that off. All right, so make sure you stay focused and stay grounded. When you do what you know is right, you may not get noticed or rewarded immediately, but eventually it will come because eventually it comes for everybody. When you do what you know is wrong, you may not get caught right away, but eventually your time will come because eventually it comes for everybody. I have had many ups and downs on this journey, and needless to say, I could, I could tell you so much more, but I know we're in a time crunch and we don't want you here in this, all this bad weather. But I do want you to understand that my journey was not always easy. There were days when I said, when I leave this parking lot, I'm never coming back. I think I put a total of 72,000 times. <laughs> but every day, I get up and I come back and I'll try to. Some days were good, some days were bad, but every day I kept trying. Every day I keep trying. Do I always get it right? Absolutely not. So if you let this necklace and these pretty blouse fool you from the streets. Y'all heard the sales. <laughs> participate in physical training and they are given handouts and a class on fitness and nutrition. Five weeks is plenty of time to make a lifestyle change for the better. We will now recognize the cadets who scored the highest overall in the assessment. Representing our BCOT class T143, our first fitness award goes to Cadet Serenity Carter from Coffee Correctional Facility. With 42 push-ups, 33 sit-ups, and running a mile in 10 minutes and 21 seconds. <laughs> Our next fitness award goes to Cadet Frederick Smith from Central State Prison. Push-ups, 44 sit-ups, and running the mile in 12 minutes and 59 seconds.
representing our BCLT class, T143. Our next award is the Top Gun Award. This Top Gun Award goes to Cadet Joshua Carter from Effingham. <laughs> He had an overall score of 96. Cadets must shoot an eight year higher twice to qualify. This course involves engaging two targets at ranges three to 25 yards, shooting from behind cover, from the kneeling position, magazine exchanges, and precision shots. That's a lot. It's my brain. During their five weeks, cadets take six written tests. Two of these are comprehensive, covering many different subjects such as offender supervision, legal issues, contraband, and ethics. In addition, there are four subject-specific written tests, firearms, CPR, fire safety, and defensive tactics. Cadets must also complete 11 practical examinations. They must demonstrate proficiency in report writing, searching an offender in their cell, and checking a vehicle for entry into the facility. They must demonstrate the proper use of a fire extinguisher, perform CPR, and properly use an automated external defibrillator. Demonstrate the proper procedure for conducting an offender count. Demonstrate a safe and correct vehicle stop. And finally, demonstrate skills in defensive tactics and the use of restraints. When taking our written test, cadets must answer a total of 350 questions. Every cadet here today has successfully passed these tests and practical examinations. However, we would like to recognize the cadets that did more than simply pass, but instead excel. Today we have honor graduates for the BCLT class, T143. Their grade point average had to be a 96 or higher, meaning they could only miss a total of 13 questions throughout the whole program. When I call your name, please stand. Ajaya Agarba. <laughs> and he's from Muscogee County Prison. Marco Bechet from Mid Richmond County Prison. <laughs> Joshua Carr. <laughs> Megan Burke, Jenkins Correction. <laughs> that best came together 
and worked as a team. Our first session award is for the session with the highest overall academic average. The highest academic average session award with an average of 90.6 is a session. <laughs> The Georgia Department of Corrections motto is Better Together, and that is also the name of our last award. Throughout the program, the instructors have observed the uh, sessions while they were in class, taking, taking their practical examinations in the gym and even while they took breaks. We were looking for the session that supported the ones not doing so well, who encouraged each other and took care of one another when it was needed. This month, the session that has best exemplified the concept of better together is Charlie's session. <laughs> In a few moments, we will begin presenting certificates to our graduates. We will request that you hold your applause and remain quiet so that all names may be heard until the entire class have received their certificates. Photography while staying in the aisles or in front of the stage is prohibited. We ask that everyone please remain seated and do not go out the aisles or stage area during this portion of the ceremony. <coughs> we will now present certificates to the graduating class, T143. Jasmine Adams, Postal State Prison. Ajaya Agbera, Muscogee County Prison. Ramara Allen, GDCP. Lakia Banks, Alberta CTC. Tillman Bennett, Coffee Correctional Facility. Marco Bache, Richmond County, CI. Fred Bouillet, Richmond County, Seattle. Jackie Brinson, Coffee Correctional Facility. Dalton Brown, Halding Arsac. Keaton Brown, Calhoun State Prison. Jenkins Correctional Facility. Tiana Carey, Jenkins Correctional Facility. Serenity Carter, correct, Coffee Correctional Facility.
Joshua Carter, Effingham County Prison. Shamika Clue, Metro Reentry Facility. Elizabeth Cody, Calhoun State Prison. Sinadria Cooper, Coastal State Prison. Cheyenne Cosby, GDC SMU. Cody Daly, GDC SMU. Akibia Davis, Muskogee County Prison. Marquise Dean, GDC, SMU. Emily Dodger, Hudson, TC. Nicole Evans, Alberius CTC. Tyler Francis, Macon Spade Prison. Shakia Garrison, Pulaski State Prison. Diamond Gaskins, Coffee Correctional Facility. Shannon Gill, GDC SMU. Tawana Hardy, Richmond County, CI. Brianna Hardy, Alberta, CTC. John Casey, Alberta, CTC. Matthew 
Hubbard, Muscogee County Prison. Jasmine 
Otis Clark, Richmond County, CIA. Melinda Durden, Coffee Correctional Facility. Let's give them a round of applause.
This is Governor Brian Kemp. And I'm First Lady Marty Kemp. We're proud to congratulate you on your graduation as correctional officers in the great state of Georgia. As officers, you play a vital role in both the criminal justice system and in keeping hard work in Georgia safe. Your actions will have a direct impact, not just on those under your watch, but on communities across the state by ensuring our correctional facilities are secure and safe. By embodying the core values of integrity, accountability, and dedication, you can ensure the well-being of your fellow officers and countless other Georgians. Thank you for answering the call to serve in this essential position. Congratulations again on this great milestone. God bless. We will now have closing remarks by the Georgia Department of Corrections Commissioner, Mr. Tyrone Oliver. continued guidance and protection as we embark on our journey. Keep us safe from harm and help us, helping us to make wise decisions in difficult situations. As we now step into our calling to serve and protect, we pray that we will always remain true to our oath and carry out our duties with integrity and honor. May we have the wisdom to treat each inmate with respect and dignity recognizing the worth and potential in every person. Lord, we also pray for our families who have supported us throughout our training and will continue to support us throughout our career. We also lift up the leaders and instructors who have trained and mentored us through this very challenging training. May they continue to provide guidance and support as we embark on our new journey. As this ceremony comes to a close, we ask for your blessing 
allowing us to fulfill our duties with a strong sense of purpose, justice, and compassion. May we be a shining example of your love and grace in the often dark world of corrections. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please. 